Hi there, my name is John Grotbrick, Lead Planner for the Broadway Planning Program at the City of Vancouver. I'm going to provide an overview presentation of the refined directions for the Broadway plan. This is a key phase of the planning process where we introduce more detailed policy directions, as well as 3D elements, including the potential scale and nature of land use changes proposed for different places. The refined directions build on what we heard through the earlier merging directions engagement phase and additional technical work that our team has completed over the past several months. Before we get into the presentation, I want to acknowledge that the city of Vancouver is located on the unceded homelands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil First Nations. A large part of this presentation is going to be focused on the city's land use policies and plans, which dictate what can and can't be built in different areas of Vancouver. It's important to acknowledge that in Vancouver, these rules often act as barriers and contribute to the systemic exclusion of Indigenous people and communities. Part of our work toward reconciliation is to address these barriers and support inclusive communities moving forward. We have a lot of content as part of this phase, so this presentation will focus on some of the key highlights that we want to share, particularly around the proposed land use and built form directions for the Broadway character areas, our one water approach to rainwater management, key transportation directions, public realm framework, and the public benefit strategy under development for Broadway. More details on these topics, as well as other areas such as arts and culture, community well-being and heritage, are available on the full set of information boards on our webpage. First, I'll provide some background on the Broadway plan as a whole. The Broadway plan is a major planning initiative focusing on opportunities to integrate new housing, job space and amenities with transit along and around the Broadway subway. It will provide a comprehensive framework to guide growth and positive change over the next 30 years. The plan area is centered al on along Broadway, generally from Clark Drive in the east to Vine Street in the west, and between 1st and 16th Avenues. The Broadway planning program was launched in March of 2019. The first stage in involved extensive background analysis and technical studies to provide a robust foundation for planning. We also developed a set of guiding principles to establish key objectives for the plan. These were endorsed by City Council in October of 2019, and I'll run through those in a moment. In stage two, we prepared a set of emerging policy directions. These cover the full range of plan topics, including areas for growth and change, housing and the economy, transportation and infrastructure, arts and culture, community well being, sustainability, heritage, and public spaces. We carried out a program of public engagement to publicize and get feedback on these emerging directions in February and March of this year. Since then, we've been preparing the refined directions, which are the focus of our November engagement. These build on the emerging directions and provide more specific policies and proposals on key topics. In particular, they set out in some detail the scale and nature of change that we're proposing across the plan area, including building heights. The final stage will be to prepare the draft plan. This will be subject to a final round of engagement early in the new year, prior to being presented to council for consideration in spring of 2022. Underpinning our work is the recognition that the introduction of the Broadway subway represents a major city planning opportunity. It will bring new, high-quality rapid transit to the city's second downtown, making it much more convenient to get around, both within the city and the wider region. By preparing the Broadway plan, we can capitalize on that investment and make the surrounding neighborhoods more complete, equitable, and sustainable by introducing new housing and job space, services and amenities, and integrating walking, cycling, and bus connections with the subway. Broadway plan will also align with and advance the goals of several citywide policies, including the Climate Emergency Action Plan, Housing Vancouver Strategy, Employment Lands and Economy Review, Transportation 2040, and many others, including, of course, the Emerging Vancouver Plan. It will also enable us to meet our responsibilities to partners like TransLink and the provincial government. These are expressed in the supportive policies agreement between the city and TransLink, which obliges the city to create a plan enabling higher density development, affordable housing, job space, and improved transportation options. Recognizing these opportunities, in October of 2019, Council adopted nine guiding principles for the plan. These were informed by public input, and they act as a set of overarching objectives against which all of the more detailed plan policies can be judged. More detailed descriptions for each of these are available on our webpage. 
I'll now introduce the vision for the Broadway plan and then walk through the overall land use policy directions for the Broadway neighborhoods by character area. The vision for Broadway. In 2050, the Broadway plan neighborhoods are highly walkable, vibrant, inclusive, and distinctive places to live, work, play, and learn, connected to the region by the Broadway subway. This image is an aerial showing the overall patterns for future growth across Broadway in the four general character areas. These character areas, the villages, residential areas, centers, and industrial employment areas, establish where and how the Broadway neighborhoods will grow and change over the next 30 years. And I'll now unpack each of those in more detail. In light blue, the centers are generally along Broadway, also extending north-south in some places, for example, along Kingsway and Canby Streets. These places also have a number of institutional campuses, including Vancouver Community College and Great Northern Way Campus, as well as Vancouver General Hospital and the Civic District with City Hall in Uptown, which is a jobs-only area between Oak and Yukon. Well-connected by rapid transit, walking and cycling, these higher-density places in Vancouver's second downtown will integrate with the Broadway subway, and provide new affordable housing and job space, and shops, services, and amenities to meet a range of community needs. In the centers for the station areas, the key directions include additional height and density, generally in the range of 30 to 40 stories for a variety of new housing, including market and below market rental, social housing, and strata ownership housing, as well as significant new job space, including major office and hotels, active commercial uses at street level, such as shops, restaurants, cafes, and patios, integration with the subway stations, including enhanced public realm and plaza spaces, and opportunities for amenity contributions from developments such as new childcare or cultural facilities within podium spaces. This image, which is not directly rep representative of any specific location, shows a typical station area with the highest buildings closest to the subway station. And this image shows the street level experience. You can imagine looking down Broadway near a station in the future with new housing and office space, wide sidewalks, patios, and places to gather along the street. For the shoulder areas, which are generally between the station areas along Broadway, the key directions include additional height and density, generally in the range of 20 to 30 stories for a variety of new housing options, as well as job space, active commercial uses at street level with enhanced public realm and wide sidewalks. And in some places, the development would be primarily mixed use residential, while in others, it would be a choice of office or residential uses, as we see along many sections of Broadway today. This image, again, not directly representative of any specific location, shows a typical shoulder area along Broadway, the mix of new office and residential development. This image shows a typical street level view of these places in the future with new housing and job space, wide sidewalks, and generous space for restaurant and cafe patios. As part of Broadway plan, we're also reviewing a number of the protected public views in the area, with a particular focus on the view from Queen Elizabeth Park, as shown here. This view has a number of sections to it, including views to the North Shore Mountains, as well as views to the downtown skyline and the port in the lower sections 3.1 and 3.2.4a. Currently, this view significantly limits potential building heights and capacity for housing and job space along Central Broadway, particularly near the Broadway and Canby area that will be the nexus of two rapid transit lines with the Canada Line and new Broadway subway. Part of our engagement, we are seeking feedback on options for potential amendments to the hired buildings policy to enable higher buildings only in those lower sections of 3.1 and 3.2.4a, which would contribute to the new Broadway skyline in our second downtown. Now, it's important to note that no intrusions into the protected views of the mountains are being considered. The next character area, the villages, are the cherished neighborhood high streets and shopping areas of West 4th, South Granville and Main Street, as well as some smaller commercial nodes around the neighborhoods, for example, at Kingsway and Fraser. Reflecting the local scale and character, these places will provide opportunities to shop, work and play during the day and at night and will foster a vibrant public life. This image shows some typical blocks in the villages in the future. Lower building heights of four to six stories will be maintained to limit redevelopment pressures on existing businesses and allow for incremental change. There are also clusters of heritage buildings, particularly in South Granville and near Main and Broadway, to be retained. 
These places will have lively sidewalks and places to gather, building on the successes of the COVID response with the new pavement plazas, expanded patios, etc., and looking to foster these over the longer term, working with local BIAs and businesses on placemaking and other initiatives. This image shows a typical village area with local businesses, restaurants, patios, and a plaza space in the foreground. You could imagine looking down Main Street or South Granville, for example, with a station area in the distance. Moving along to the residential areas and firstly the existing apartment districts. These places have a significant portion of the city's stock of purpose-built rental, as well as social and co-op housing, providing a range of affordable options, primarily in three to four story walk-up apartments, as well as towers up to 12 stories in the areas around South Granville. Over the next 30 years, these places will maintain existing housing affordability and provide choice for existing rent renters to remain in their neighborhoods by enabling careful renewal of the aging rental stock over the long term with requirements for below market rents and strength of tenant protections. The careful renewal of the older rental stock is one of the overarching and most complex challenges for the Broadway plan to address. Most of this stock comprises older low rise rental apartments built in the 1960s and 70s. And while it provides some of the most affordable rental in the city, it is aging. Many of these buildings will reach the end of their life within the 30 year time frame of the plan. Doing nothing would lead to significant negative outcomes, including tenant evictions associated with major renovations or deteriorating buildings, and thus eventual redevelopment at greater height and density is needed to renew and expand the stock while maintaining affordability with enhanced tenant protections. Looking at this in more detail, we see here on the left, a typical aging three-story walk-up apartment. Staff has retained a third-party land economist to conduct extensive economic testing of what potential redevelopment scenarios of such a site would require in terms of density or FSR floor space ratio to be financially viable. Moving from left to right, in the first column would be a redevelopment with 100% market rental, which would require an FSR of about 6.5, which is an approximately 14 to 18 story building to be viable in the near term. This would not include any below market units and would come with standard tenant protections. The next scenario would include 20% below market units replacing existing affordability as well as enhanced tenant protections. To be viable in the near term would require a density of 10 to 15 FSR, which would be a 35 plus story tower. Now on the right is the proposed approach for Broadway plan. This includes the 20% below market units and enhanced tenant protections at a density of about 7.5 FSR, which tra translates to a building height of approximately 20 to 25 stories. The intent is this would provide a redevelopment option today for underbuilt sites, while for larger rental buildings, it would provide a path for renewal and incremental redevelopment over the long term as rental buildings age and reach the end of their life, ensuring affordability is maintained and tenants are protected. This image shows some typical blocks in the RM apartment areas in the future. On the right would be an RM3 zoned area, such as around South Granville. With the current mix of low rise apartments and 12 story towers, over time, the aging rental would be renewed and expanded with new development around 20 to 25 stories. And on the left would be an RM4 zoned area, such as in Kitsilano or Mount Pleasant. We're also proposing an option for sites without rental housing, such as aging strata buildings for renewal and redevelopment with an inclusionary social housing component to enable new affordable choices on these sites, as well as new home ownership options. This would be in the range of 15 to 18 stories. The overall intent for these areas is that over time, these places would evolve with a mix of building types and scales, as well as new local sh serving shops and services, such as small grocers and cafes in select locations. This street level perspective shows what these places could look like in the future with that eclectic mix of building types and scales. A typical block could include a 20 story tower on one end, mixed in with low rise apartments and heritage houses, while maintaining the cherished green and leafy character with large street trees, landscaping and gardens. The other type of residential area is the lower density areas, which are mostly zoned RT and include a mix of single family houses, duplexes, multiple conversion dwellings and smaller scale strata developments. These places will accommodate new rental apartments over time with strengthened tenant protections, 
enabling new affordable housing choices, particularly in off arterial locations on quieter residential streets. In these places, we are also proposing select strategic areas for taller forms that would include low market rental, which are in dark purple on the map. Locational criteria we are considering and looking for public feedback on include areas in close proximity to rapid transit, areas near schools and parks, areas adjacent to an existing or future commercial street, adjacent to RM apartment areas, and avoiding large concentrations of heritage buildings. This image shows some typical blocks in the RT areas in the future, which will evolve with new six-story rental apartments, as well as market and below market rental apartments up to 18 stories in those select locations. Enabling new rental apartments in these places on quieter residential streets with new local retail and services is one of the big moves for this plan. Here we have a street level perspective view showing a new corner cafe with rental apartments above, providing access to daily needs within a short walk. A higher apartment form is on the left, and a number of heritage houses are mixed in with the green and leafy streetscape. Finally, our fourth general character area, the industrial employment areas, which com comprise the Mount Pleasant industrial area, the Broad Slopes mixed employment area near Granville Island, and a small area along Great Northern Way on the edge of False Creek Flats. Critical to the economy, these places will provide additional opportunities for employment space to support a range of cities serving light industrial businesses and to foster a growing innovation economy and creative industries. This image shows some typical blocks in the Mount Pleasant industrial area in the future. The area's eclectic mix of different lot sizes, building types, heights, and forms will continue as the area grows and evolves with a modest increase in height and density for typical light industrial office projects. At the top, the larger buildings, a more significant height and density increase would be for projects delivering a significant amount of industrial space, at least 50% of floor area. Policy directions also seek to review and modernize, potentially expand the permitted uses in the area to support the innovation economy and provide services and amenities for area employees. Fostering arts and cultural spaces, including potential contributions from new development, is also a key direction. This street level perspective shows the mix of building types and scales as these places evolve in the future, including older low rise industrial buildings, newer, taller forms with office in the upper floors, existing retained heritage houses, and of course, a brewery with a large patio on the street corner. In terms of overall growth and change, based on the refined directions, we estimate the Broadway plan area could see approximately 24,000 to 30,000 new homes for 40 to 50,000 new residents and 33,000 to 42,000 new jobs over the next 30 years. Now, it's important to note that this is a capacity-based analysis of what could be delivered to approximately 2050 based on the proposed land use policy. This is not a growth projection or forecast. Actual growth will be determined by a number of variables, including regional population and immigration trends, demand for homes and job space in the Broadway area, regional economic growth, and other market trends. The citywide Vancouver plan will address the city's larger role in how we accommodate and determine growth in the city and region in relation to the update to the Metro Vancouver Regional Growth Strategy, Metro 2050, and its population and job growth projections. I'll now cover the refined plan directions for One Water, transportation, and the public realm. A One Water approach is being applied to utilities planning for the Broadway area. This approach is a watershed scale planning to create utility servicing plans that values all types of water and strives to work with nature as opposed to against it. By applying this approach, we can provide water, sewer and drainage services to existing and future development, while also improving water quality through mitigation of combined sewer outflows and treatment of urban stormwater runoff, increasing our resilience to climate change, and finding cost-effective solutions that optimize the existing system and provide co-benefits or meet multiple city objectives. Refined directions to meet these objectives are undertaking strategic water and sewer upgrades, constructing new stormwater outfalls that adapt to sea level rise and divert water, causing downstream flooding, expanding use of green rainwater infrastructure, creating a blue-green system to capture and treat water and increase biodiversity, and expanding on-site groundwater and rainwater management requirements. Looking at blue-green systems in more detail, these systems 
provide a network of park-like connector streets that manage water and increase biodiversity. They align with our historic waterways and are where stormwater still flows overland today as it follows the low spots in the landscape. Blue-green systems help our water system by reducing the amount of rainwater entering the pipe system and by intercepting overland flow causing flooding. They also help water quality by using soil and plants to filter out pollutants from stormwater runoff, protecting salmon and other river and ocean wildlife. Finally, like the Sunset Park example shown, blue-green systems can be a positive contribution to the public realm with the planting and compatibility with active transportation routes. Moving along to transportation, the overall transportation for the Broadway area is that people of all ages and abilities can easily and comfortably meet their daily needs by walking and rolling. One of the Climate Emergency Action Plan targets is to achieve an 80% sustainable mode share by 2030 in rapid transit areas, which includes the Broadway area. The vision is also for having enjoyable places for people to gather and connect with one another while ensuring the road network continues to function well to accommodate goods movement, emergency and medical services, and trips by or for people with mobility challenges. As mentioned before, enabling people to get around easily by walking and rolling is one of the key priorities of the Broadway plan, and the city will look to improve the conditions for pedestrians in the area overall. We've also identified a network of streets where improving the walking and rolling environment is particularly important, as we expect there will be higher volumes of people using these streets. This network includes the commercial streets such as Broadway, Granville, Canby, Main, and West Forth, and it also includes existing and future greenways such as the Arbutus Greenway and the Midtown, Heather, Ontario, and Glen Greenways. Looking at Broadway itself, Broadway is one of the key commercial streets in the plan area, and one of the guiding principles is to enhance Broadway as a great street. To make it a great street, we are planning to repurpose the curb lanes to public space to allow for wider sidewalks, large street trees, green infrastructure and weather protection, universally accessible amenities and street design features, easy access to shops and services and places to gather, and easy transfer from one mode of travel to another, for example, from walking to transit. With walking being a priority and the limited amount of road space on Broadway, we are not able to accommodate bike facilities on Broadway at this time. However, the city will be enhancing the north-south cycling connections, as well as other east-west routes such as 10th Avenue and 7th Avenue, and to develop a dense network of safe and comfortable cycling routes. The goal is to enable all residents and destinations to be within two blocks of the cycling network. This bike network will include the existing and future greenways described earlier, as well as existing and future bike routes such as Cyprus, Columbia, Burrard, and Quebec. We are also bringing out a draft public realm framework with refined directions. The public realm framework will be an interconnected network of public space opportunities in the Broadway area, including greenways, blue-green systems, commercial high streets, plazas, parks, and large and unique sites. The framework focuses on where there are opportunities for public space improvements, accompanied by principles for how those spaces should be designed and programmed. Specific projects will be delivered over the course of the plan with more detailed design and programming of each individual improvement done through project delivery. Public amenities and infrastructure are important for livable, complete, and inclusive communities. A public benefit strategy, or PBS, is a long-term plan for the delivery of public amenities and infrastructure to address renewal and growth needs for a geographic area. It includes a 10-year capital strategy that aligns current and future service needs with funding sources. There are four key steps in preparing a public benefit strategy, and we're currently focused on the first two during this refined directions phase. These include assessing existing and future local needs within a citywide context and identifying public benefits necessary to address those needs. Those are outlined in more detail in our full set of information boards. The next two steps will come with the draft plan, and these include estimating the cost of amenities and infrastructure and potential funding sources, and then prioritizing public benefits based on the timing of delivery as well as funding capacity. Public amenities and facilities in PBS include parks and open spaces, community centers, affordable housing, childcare, social services, arts and cultural spaces, libraries, transportation connections, utilities, and fire and emergency services. This map shows a number of these existing services and amenities in the Broadway plan area. 
And while there are significant needs across the area, we know there are also specific needs in some places, such as park space in Fairview, south of Broadway, east of Burrard, or arts and cultural spaces in Mount Pleasant. The PBS will take these local neighborhood-based considerations into account. With the Broadway plan's focus on shifting toward more affordable housing and job space, lower levels of development contributions, including development cost levies or DCLs, and community amenity contributions, CACs, are expected. This will require prioritization of public benefit in investments, optimizing the use of existing land and facilities, and advocating for senior government investment. Now that concludes our overview of the Broadway Plan Refined Directions. We hope you review the materials and provide us with your feedback to help shape the draft plan. There are many ways to get involved in this round of engagement. Our Shape Your City page is the hub for our virtual open houses, including the full set of information boards and accompanying survey, this presentation, and an online Q&A. Partnership with the Vancouver Plan, we will also have three in-person drop-in style open houses at City Lab at Broadway and Canby on November 9th, 10th, and 20th, organized in line with COVID-19 public health measures. We also have a series of online virtual workshops that you can participate in, and stay tuned for our neighborhood pop-up outreach events around the Broadway plan area, as well as office hours where you can talk to staff directly if you have any questions or comments you wish to share. More details on all these engagement opportunities will be available on our Shape Your City page. Now that concludes this virtual presentation for the Broadway Plan Refined Directions. Thanks very much for tuning in and for your participation and interest in the Broadway planning process. Have a great day.